Okay, now we're ready to install the floor joists, and as you can see, we've got some uh, more 2 by 8 lumber, and it's just the regular lumber, it's not treated. You buy the lumber, you say non-treated or treated. In this case, since it's above the sill plate, we don't need treated. It's more than two foot off the ground, so we're, we're good there. And so, uh, what we need to do is measure the distance between our, our riser that we installed when we uh, created our sill plate, and, and against the uh, building here. And as you can see on our uh, former structure, uh, you'll see this, the deck screws which we used. I like using deck screws on treated lumber. It just, so to me it's uh, easier. If you make a mistake too, you can pull them out and, and fix them. But it's every 16 inches. Your, your, floor, your joist span, just like stud walls, you, you put one every 16 inches. So these are already marked. Now what we may run into trouble with is our sheathing. It may be too low, which it should be, <laughs> because uh, you put it over the, the your stud wall is is um, is about right here. And so your sheathing should always come down over. Now when we, on the outside, when we put siding on, uh, and, and now that we've got a concrete block, we've got to actually repair that, because your, your, your sheathing will go down uh, but below the the, the uh, few inches or, or a few, it may be an inch or half inch. I can't remember exactly what it is. I'll, when I make the video, I'll, I'll clarify exactly how much it is. But your your sheathing will go over your sill plate and onto the concrete, so it overlaps and it and it creates an air block. Uh, even though air still gets up in, it, it creates an air block, and you put your siding down over that even even more, just a little bit of a lip. And so that's what we'll do when we get to that point. But what we may have a trouble here is our, our uh, uh, sheathing. We're probably going to have to cut it off. So i got to take these screws out, which I like using wood screws too uh, with sheathing and subfloor. And so I went ahead and cut the old uh, wrap, which is kind of brittle and nasty and no good anyway. And so I cut it off uh, up above so we can uh, uh, get the circular saw in there to cut that uh, sheathing off and get our, our joists in. Okay, and so the materials we have, we have our, our joists, which uh, uh, I think it's going to be approximately 13 on a 16 foot span. Uh, I think that's correct. No, it would be 11. Excuse me. I think it's because you got 10. You got 16 feet, 16 inches. That means 10, but you got one on each side, so that should be 11. I think we have 11 joists. And, uh, and then we got what we call joist hangers. Now, joist hangers are when you don't have the ability to get on the other side and uh, and since we have our mark we know where we're going to be able to put them and uh, we, we hang in these on the inside but on the outside we're just going to go on the other side of our riser and put a screw through and uh, I could use uh, 16D nails and I've got a pneumatic nailer um, and I may do that on this side but on the, the, jo on the joist hangers uh, they are uh, much better with screws. I, I like screws better because my, and I, I do have my old trusty uh, uh, framing hammer, and I could use regular nails the old-fashioned way, but this just makes it so much easier. And so for joist hangers, what we use is uh, you buy them. They're for two by sixes or two by eights. They they work with either one. These are like a buck a piece, and I got. Uh, uh, nine of them I believe because I only need them on the uh, the inside and then here's my deck screws and using the old trusty Ryobi with the bit that comes with the screws when you buy them so we're all set so what I got to do is I got to measure between the, the riser and uh, the building see how much uh, room we got uh, I think they're going to be about 94 inches if I measured correctly and then I got to see how much of the uh, uh, sheathing I have to cut off, and so that's the first thing we got to do. So uh, we'll uh, do that measuring, and then uh, create another uh, video clip uh, to insert in with that, so you can see how we did it. So when we're measuring out where to put the floor joists, uh, just like in stud walls, we do 16-inch centers and on center, and that means uh, from center to center, it's 16 inches. Uh, we don't do from outside to outside. And so, uh, if you did, I mean, that's okay. You're just gonna, you're gonna have to make sure you compensate for it. And so, as you can see here, I've got uh, right in the center here, on center, it's where I start my tape, and I go and see on most tapes, your your 16, every 16 inches is in red. 
and so it gives you a very good, uh, easy grasp of of where to put your uh, your joists and your studs whenever you're doing stud walls. It's the same way. So you go over here and you see we got 32 inches, okay? And that's your your next joist location. So I just put a little pencil mark and we keep rolling our tape. And if you want to, um, I mean this is the way they do it. Sometimes what I do is I I, I just do every 16 inches with my tape because it's it's, it's easier to to control a tape just every 16 inches. You just move the beginning of your your tape to the mark and go every 16 inches. So that's how that works. So you go down your riser and make a mark every 16 inches and you remember on the other side I have screws on center every 16 inches. Now I measure to make sure and they're not exact I'm gonna have to put it a little to the side of those screws but it's okay I want to make sure my uh, uh, floor joists are straight and so so once you go through and mark every 16 inches you know where to put a joist we measured our boards they were 94 and a, and a quarter and so we're going to cut all our joists uh, uh, two by eights uh, to length and then we're going to fasten them I'm going to fasten here with 16D nails with my pneumatic nailer and I'm going to fasten the, the joist hangers with deck screws it just works easier so uh, now we're going to so I'm going to go ahead and get the boards all cut and what I like to do is I like to start in the center and work my way back. That way I'm not stepping over joists. So I'll, I'll start in the center here and work my way out. And then I'll come back in and I'll start on this side and work my way out. And that way I'm not stepping over joists each time I put one in. It just makes it easier. That's my method. Other people do things their way, that's fine. That's the way I like to do it. Okay, we'll get our boards cut. We'll see you in the next clip. Okay, so we are ready to put in the uh, floor joists. We got, uh, got them cut. And uh, on one side, on this side, since we can get to it, we're going to use uh, framing nails. And see, I have a pneumatic nailer here. And, and as me being human, I forgot to go buy more, and that's all I've got. So we're going to get started. And then um, we're going to use, uh, on the joist hangers on the other side, we're going to use right here we're going to use screws, deck screws. And so uh, once we uh, get to that point, as you can see I've got one joist cut and as you can see it's level. That's important. If it's, if it's not exactly level it's got a little bit, just a hair of a downhill slope. And that's better than going the other way. If you want something to go away from your the center of your house, just a little downhill is not, not bad, but it, it, it's pretty much level as you can see. Alright, so so what I do is I, uh, and again the degree on these, I can't remember what they are. Every uh, nail uh, has a degree setting when you're a pneumatic nailer, but uh, these are, uh, it's already been set, and uh, I don't have very many of course, but uh, I can use them, what little I do have. And every time uh, you start to use a pneumatic tool, it's always good to oil it. And as you can see, it says right here, oil daily, okay? I'm about out of my oil, but i got a little bit left of this. And what you do is on the, the insert for the air intake, you just drop a couple drops down inside, and that will oil it up pretty darn good. The air moves it through the, the system. But you don't want it running dry, so oil it every time you use it. All right. So then you connect that to the airline. Alright, so that's ready to go. Now I'm using a very small uh, hair compressor and th this is a 100 PSI uh, portable unit. Um, it really doesn't keep up with heavy framing. For small projects like what we're doing it's fine, but when you got a guy running along plunk 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 rap rapidly uh, uh, putting nails in it's not going to keep up with that because it's got to keep that 100 PSI processed and so we put a couple in and then you give it time to pump back up and so I have to be patient with it. And so uh, i got to make sure I have electricity connected to it at all times so it will keep uh, filling with air. It's, it's already filled up with 100 PSI and so it will probably kick on here after a couple of nails uh, and once it does that we will uh, uh, 
you know, it'll make a lot of racket for the video, but you'll understand what it's doing. And so what I'm doing is I'm coming back here, and, and in order to activate it, you got to push it down, and then that'll activate it enough to where you can pull your trigger. Okay, so I'm at my mark right here for my joist. It's sticking out a little bit, so I'm going to push it in if I can. Okay, so I got one nail in. And what I'm going to do, since there's a little gap here, I'm going to grab my framing hammer and get rid of that gap because we don't want that. And I just, this will help with that immensely. Still a little bit. Alright, so now we're done. We need to go over here with our uh, drill, cordless drill and, and screws. I've got them over on the other side. Remember I said I don't like stepping over joists. I start in the center. Well, it always helps to make sure everything you need is with you so you don't have to climb over them. Okay, so we're going to go over here to the joist hanger. I got my three and a half inch deck screws and the best place to start is at the bottom push it in with your fingers go in slow and see these things have the angle so it gets you at the right angle I'm gonna go ahead and put it down on one and go in slow with it you strip your screws out yeah, that's much better. And then on the other side, I'm going to put one up on the top. And it sets the angle. So your screw automatically moves when you get it started. See, that's so much better to go on, on, the, on the one speed. Set it down on one instead of two. And, uh, that gets that started. So we've got two in. I need to put one here and then one on each, uh, each uh, hole here on both sides. And grab three screws. I need three. Very nice. Okay. And these just go in straight. I'm going to go ahead and put my speed up here. Supposed to pump it, get it started, and go at it. There you go. Okay, that side's done. The other side. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm getting tired. I've been at this all day. Go back down to one for the angle. Goes in nice and slow. I got the two. These are going in straight. That's how easy that is. Okay, here you have it. Now we have all the floor joists in. As you can see, evenly spaced, 16 centers. With our outside riser, top of sills. It all looks good. Not bad for a shade tree carpenter. <laughs> I hope this helps uh, anybody who, who needs some uh, guidance. In, uh, in building a subfloor and and uh, put in the joists on top of blocks. It's a fun project. So now we are ready for the subfloor, which you can see we've we've got laying down here. It's a uh, tongue and groove. You can see here's the the joints for it to to go in together. And on the other side, you'll have your your groove. 
that was the tongue and this is the groove. See it's uh, got a little groove cut in here. Okay. And so uh, we are now ready to put in the subfloor. So I hope this video was helpful. Any questions, uh, feel free to ask. We're glad to help any way we can.